All right. So I first just wanted to, for anybody that's coming in new or newish to Fair Vote Canada, and we're getting new people all the time, which is just fantastic. I just want to let everybody know that we have been working on this campaign for a National Citizens Assembly and electoral reform. It'll be about five years this March. Uh, we started around 2019. We did a uh, survey of our all our supporters and you know whether they would back this strategy and they did since then we've run three national polls that your donations have paid for uh, in the last four years showing that this is a very popular idea with Canadians across party lines we've sent cards and that kind of thing to MPs to party leaders to Justin Trudeau countless times letting them know we want a citizens assembly we've done lots of online actions, email your MP, that kind of thing, tell them before and after elections and at various key moments in between that we want a citizens assembly. At uh, one time we did an action pushing uh, Jagmeet Singh and the NDP to speak up for this since they promised to make it a condition of a minority government in 2019 and we can all kind of see that that didn't really happen. Um, so we pushed uh, the NDP as well. So we've been pushing from all angles in the last federal election. We did 300,000 door hangers and that's you folks that did 300,000 door hangers in writings across the country and I know many of you were involved in that and it was a, a great experience. Uh, for us and a, a wonderful way for people to get involved and uh, just keep electoral reform on the minds of Canadians. We also did stuff like radio ads. We did uh, we did a first TV ad. We do social media ads periodically and lots at election time. And we have a wonderful writers group as well as ongoing chapters. In the last four or five years, we've been educating on the idea of a citizens assembly. So we've done lots of webinars for supporters about citizens assemblies with experts and people who've participated in them, how they work. We've done lots of MP visits, uh, letting MPs like, uh, here's one Laurel Collins, know how, why we're supporting this, why Fairville Canada is using this strategy, what they are, how they work. So there's been a lot of groundwork that's led up to the last year when all your hard work is starting to pay off and lead us to one of these windows of opportunity that we're sitting in right now. So in 2021, uh, we made the first small breakthrough when we worked with NDP Democratic Reform critic Daniel Blakey to bring a, meth, uh, mo a motion, yeah, a motion to the Procedure and House Affairs Committee in Parliament, which voted to do a study of how a National Citizens Assembly and electoral reform would work, which may not sound like a lot, but it was actually huge for us to have the six Liberals on that committee all vote in agreement to do that study since the door had been slammed and locked for the last six years. So that was a major effort for us. And again, months and months of lobbying MPs to get that win on the PROC committee. Unfortunately, uh, then an election was called, snap election was called thanks to the wonderful incentives of first past the post and that study never happened. But the October, uh, just this last October, we found out that one of our supporters who is a Liberal Party member had put forward a resolution going to the Liberal Party convention. And that is for only for Liberal Party members participating in their policy development process. And so when we saw that come up out of BC, uh, supporters who are Liberal Party members uh, gave it a push from the grassroots. And actually a lot of people gave it a push from the grassroots who are Liberal Party members that we don't even know who they are. It was a very popular idea. It finished as the number one resolution in BC among BC Liberals, not the provincial party, the federal BC Liberals. And that's when, of course, we put out the fundraiser to, to do yet another poll to show that this is still a really popular idea across party lines. And we decided that we are going to try to win this vote at the Liberal Party convention. During this time, one thing we did that was super effective was we worked since uh, from the summer before with Kitchener Center MP Mike Morris, who was just fantastic to work with. He put forward a private member's motion for a National Citizens Assembly and electoral reform, which is almost like the one that we're working on right now. The only difference with his motion is because when Parliament start, members go into a lottery and that tells them what position they are and whether their private member's business will ever be heard in the house and he did not draw a lucky number. So his motion was never gonna get voted on. But what it did was it allowed us to 
have people go out to Liberal MPs and talk to them about this motion, ask them to second this motion, and ask them to support the resolution going to a vote at the Liberal Party convention. So it was sort of laid the groundwork for what was to come. And here you can see some of our supporters visiting their MPs. This is Brendan Hanley in the Yukon, who, by the way, is on the fence. Uh, Brendan seconded M76 because he wants to encourage a conversation. So when we're talking about people who need a petition, here's your man. Ones like this. And then we started gathering more and more supporters for the idea of a citizens assembly. We did get some media, but we weren't looking for media. We were actually not looking for media uh, because it needed to be a grassroots effort. And there, of course, is Riel, who I'm sure we all know, and you'll see on this webinar, speaking to the resolution at the Liberal Party convention. And then we won that vote, which was sort of amazing. And it finished at number 11 out of 24 priority resolutions. So why does this matter? It matters because some of these MPs that you're going out and doing petitions for, they don't even realize that a National Citizens Assembly and electoral form is the official policy of their party for the next eight years. So we kind of thought that would be it. There really wasn't anywhere else to go with it. We were going to go back and work with Daniel Blakey to bring this back to the PROC committee and see if we could again get a study of this idea going when NDP MP Lisa Marie Barron, who's the MP for Nanaimo Ladysmith, stepped forward and seeing the momentum that we'd built around Mike Morris's motion and the different members of different parties that were coming forward to support it, decided to use her spot, which she has a high spot in the lottery list for a private member's motion to put forward her own almost identical motion for a National Citizens Assembly and electoral reform. So this could be brought forward to the House of Commons for a vote. And that's when this campaign started. So just to give you a little a rough overview of the timeline of this campaign, it started in June with Lisa Marie Barron putting forward her motion for a citizens assembly but the first debate was on november 7th um if anybody's interested in watching that i mean i don't you didn't miss a whole lot to be quite honest. um but if you want the link um we're happy to send you the link to the first debate the second debate we don't have a date for it nobody does mps will be back in the house of commons after the holiday on January 29th. And so we expect that the second debate will be in February. And then about a week after that will be the vote. So while we don't have a date for sure, we have to be ready for this to go to a vote in February. In terms of the timing of our campaign, you can see along the bottom that we have been doing MP visits since the beginning. And I can't state this strongly enough. <laughs> MP visits, even if there's two or three of you, are, even if there's one of you, are by far the best way to get Liberal MPs and even Conservative MPs on board. Those small group meetings to talk about this idea are how we got almost all the joint seconders on these motions, which will bring other MPs on board because they know then it's okay to vote for this. It's okay to support this because some of my colleagues are supporting it. So we did the maximum we could with the volunteers that we had, which is more than we've ever had before, but obviously we're still uh, not a huge organization. We did all the MP visits we could, and those are continuing. Now we're starting with petitions to MPs, and in a couple of weeks, we'll start adding on some advertising. So what we want ideally is we want them visited, we want them getting petitions, we want them seeing ads, we want them being hit with this, um, all the ones on the fence from every different angle. And here you can see a great post on Twitter by Conservative MP Alex Ruff, who met with 25 constituents in, in person about three weeks ago and said he's 75% convinced to vote for it. So our, I don't know if our wonderful volunteer from Sim, uh, Bruce Gray Owen Sound is here, but he was out at the market collecting petitions uh, yesterday, and that's exactly what we want to see. And also uh, some of our volunteers visiting Minister Carla Waltro. So as we've continued to build support for Motion M86, we held a reception again to give MPs a chance to meet each other so that the ones who are supporting, you know, to meet other ones that are supporting, talk about why they're supporting, you know, build some encouragement and momentum. And here you can see uh, the co-sponsor of that reception with Lisa Marie was a uh, Julie Zirkowicz. And so here's where we finished off with the first debate where we got the maximum number of allowed joint seconders 
on Lisa Marie's motion. So there's 20 joint seconders. You can't get any more joint seconders now, that's it. Uh, but it's enough to show other MPs that there's significant support for this idea. So what do we need to win? Okay, we need 169 votes. Well, obviously, if everybody's not in the House of Commons that day, we don't need 169, but we need, you know, more than half. So that's where that number comes from. And where are we at now? We are probably at 85 to 90, which may seem like it's a huge steep hill, but don't forget electoral reform is always Mount, like climbing Mount Everest. But we are closer than we've ever been before. We need about 80 more liberal and conservative MPs to vote for this in order to win this motion for a National Citizens Assembly and electoral reform. But I think we can do it. So here you can see where we're at. The Green, NDP, and Bloc are all going to vote for it. So we do not want to focus on those on those folks. There's not a lot they can do to help us other than send us volunteers and other ridings. We need to focus on liberals and we need to focus on conservatives. So for those of you that know me and uh, worked with me for a long time, you know that every year I go to the Great Wolf Lodge with my family and there's a water park there and they have a big bucket. So this is, I, I you guys can see where we're going with this, right? So the water keeps going in the bucket and you don't know when it's gonna tip, but eventually it tips. That's what we're trying to do with this campaign. We're trying to get to a tipping point where there's enough liberal and conservative MPs who are not only supporting this, not only might vote for it, but are public about it and are talking to their colleagues. So this is where we're focusing. We're focusing on undecided MPs. So those are MPs where we have no idea where they stand because there's been no volunteer to visit them or they've been visited and they're on the fence. Okay, so that's target group number one. Second group we're focusing on to some degree in some places are supportive MPs that could become advocates in the caucus. So, you know, there's MPs that are sort of like, you know, well, you know, I guess I could vote for this, you know, like maybe I'll go that day and I'll feel like it, just like I feel like having cereal for breakfast, you know, that's good, but that's not going to win us M86. We, we need those MPs that are sort of reluctantly maybe voting for it to be talking to other MPs. And we what we need them saying is, a lot of my constituents want this. I'm hearing from them. I'm getting petitions. There's a lot of pressure. This is an issue in my riding. And so we need that message sort of going around and around the caucus, and we need it going to the ministers as well. Finally, we're focusing on some receptive ministers. And the reason for that is because contrary to situation we had in 2017, when almost every single cabinet minister just stood with Justin Trudeau and said, yeah, that's it, just can the whole thing. We now have maybe three ministers who were supportive of a citizens assembly before they were made ministers, and another three whom I think are leaning our way. So we need those ministers to hear from constituents in their riding and also to be hearing from the backbench MPs. So just to sum up the important things to remember, okay, we are in a unique political moment. This is like a this is like a time limited opportunity. For those who've been around in this campaign for many, many years, you know the last time we had a vote on electoral reform was uh almost seven years ago, six and a half years ago. They don't come along very often. We are in a political moment where you know the projections are showing if an election was held tomorrow, the Liberals might win about 71 seats. So we're in a very different spot with the MPs of that party than we were back in 2017, 2019, 2020. We're in a, a moment where there's a lot more open-minded MPs than there was. And on the conservative end, even though they're, I'm sure they're very happy looking at the polls, they also know what it's like to live under eight years of liberal rule. And so some of them are a little more open-minded than they were in the past as well. We don't need to convince 110 liberal and conservatives ourselves, although it'd be great if we had volunteers in every single riding. We need enough of to convince enough of them to get to a tipping point. And I think we have enough people that if we all pitch in now and all work hard together in the next six weeks, we can get there and we can get this big win on this motion for a citizens assembly. And that is my short introduction to this. And now I'm going to hope it was short. Now I what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Riel and Ellen, who are going to talk about their experience so far on the petition campaign. Right, thank you. So this is story time. 
I want to tell you the story of, of uh, how we've gotten into this in the uh, national capital region, the Ottawa Gatineau region, um, where we are now, and uh, some of the lessons that we think we can uh, share with uh, people in other writings. I will then talk a little bit about my own role collecting signatures because I'm number two in the Ottawa region in terms of collecting signatures. Number one is Ellen French, who's going to be speaking right after me, and she, she's she's amazing. <laughs> Wait till you hear her. Um, not, not to raise the bar too, too, too high for you, Ellen. I hope that's okay. <laughs> um, so how did this start with us? You know, Fairville Canada didn't have a petition signing campaign a month ago. Um, but we organized, or Anita organized with Michelle, uh, this training by with, with Jill O'Reilly. And it, it had two components to it. One was campaign planning, fine. And the other one was canvassing. And it occurred to me, because I was attending that training, occurred to me that if we're going to do canvassing, let's do canvassing for real. And canvassing for real, and given that our main campaign right now is uh, getting M motion M86 approved, I suggested, well, why don't we actually start a petition, a paper petition, and use our training to collect some paper petitions. And that worked out quite well. Quite well. Uh, we did it door to door, um, and we ended up picking up enough petitions in two ridings, Ottawa Vanier and Ottawa Center, almost enough to meet the threshold. Uh, so that was really a very, very good start. And it led to general enthusiasm about this idea. We decided in our chapter, which has currently has 12 ridings in it, we decided we're simply gonna collect petitions in every one of those ridings, if we at all possibly can. Um, and uh, we need only 25 per riding. So, you know, that's the minimum. And then if we can get more, uh, great. We can make more of an impact, more of an impression, but at least let's try for, for 25. As it stands, as of November 26, we now have uh, 25 or more in six of the 12 ridings. There's a few ridings that things have not really started yet, but we're well under our way. Uh, we've got a couple of ridings with a large number of signatures. Um, one has uh, over 300, and that's Carlton riding. For those you, of you who don't know, that's Pierre Poilievre's riding. Uh, and we want a lot of signatures in po Pierre Poilievre's riding to try to influence him to at least be a little more positive about the Citizens' Assembly idea. So I think we're going to get a meeting with him with this many signatures. And that's where Ellen French is from. So that's that's a huge success, essentially due to, to her very... Uh, incredible efforts uh, mobilizing basically her whole small it's not a small town but her district of, of Richmond uh, in Carlton riding the next riding is mine uh, Ottawa Vanier we've got 147 uh, signatures uh, at this point and we're we're recruiting large numbers of people uh, who are signing up for Fairville Canada because we have a little column at the end called update question mark and if they put a yes there we make it very clear to them that means they'll be hearing from Fairville Canada and we're, I think we're getting about one out of three for that. So we have about 600 signatures in all, 630 signatures. That means we've got 200 new sign-ins to Fairville Canada. So I think that's that's a, a measure of our success as well. Our messaging, uh, Anita was talking about different categories of MPs. Well, you know, in, 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 in our region, seven out of 12 of the MPs are supportive of this resolution already. So we're going to be, we're trying to impress them enough to not just vote for this resolution, but also message this in caucus. We have one cabinet member, uh, that's Jenna Suds in Canada, uh, Carlton. Uh, so we'll be reaching out to her and, and asking her to talk about it in cabinet. So that's uh, our strategy is a little bit different uh, in that regard. So we're doing fairly well, considering we've been going at this for a month. Um, it's been more challenging than I thought it would be at the beginning, to be quite honest. That, that training worked well for us because a lot of our volunteers that are actually feet on the ground already collecting signatures are people who came out of that training. So that, that served us really well. Where I've been having trouble is, is two, two types. Uh, one is getting people to sign up. Uh, I think they find it intimidating, uh, especially if they think it's gonna mean door to door. And the other one is getting people actually started. I've got a lot of people who've signed up but they, they just can't seem to get out the door. Um, so what, I, what I've been focusing on lately is the easy ask. And you'll see that easy ask reflected in some of Anita's material as well. We're not asking people to 
collect 100 signatures by themselves. We're not even asking them to go door to door. The ask that I keep repeating everywhere is, can you get one page of signatures? In fact, even if you can't fill the whole page, start a page, right? And uh, you know, ask your friends, ask your neighbors, ask your relatives, start with the easy ones. So I want to talk to you about what kind of recipe uh, I'm putting forward now, which allows people to get what I'm calling a quick start. It's a little bit confusing because Anita's calling her guide a quick start guide. I have a guide and, and, and then within that, there's a section called quick start. And um, uh, Michelle is going to put the link to just that quick start section of our guide uh, for anybody who'd like uh, who'd like to see it, and then uh, maybe it'll be incorporated in Anita's uh, material later on. But at least you'll have you'll have it as a standalone document. And I want to just walk you through that so you can see how easy it is to actually get going. So the first thing you want to do is just peruse the guide. Now we have our guide in in the, the National Capital Region. Anita has hers. Whichever wherever you happen to be, just peruse that guide. Now I wrote in my notes, it's a two minute read. Well, maybe it's maybe more five minute, five minute read if you like, but just kind of get the lay of the land. I think that's step one. So peruse the guide is the first thing you need to do. Second step, read the script. Now I didn't say memorize the script. I'm just saying, read it. You'll see that the basic message in that script is amazingly easy. And I've been finding meeting absolute strangers. I go through this script. I don't, I don't recite it. And that's not how I do it. I, I see how it goes with each person, but you know, I have the basic message in the back of my head. So try to get that message into the back of your head. I'd say, don't bother to, to memorize it. Just feel that this is what you're gonna use to the very first people that you meet. And the first people that you meet will be your wife or husband, your adult children, your neighbors that you already know. You know, you go to the door and you say, I'm your neighbor just next door and whatever. Uh, and, and in my case, people in the dog park as well. And I've got little tricks about how to make that work for me. So I've read the script, I've digested it. And then I just go out and talk to people. That's what I'm suggesting. So that's number two. Number three, you have a home printer. Almost everyone has a home printer. Just print the signature form at home. You don't have to wait for somebody to deliver it to you. Print it at home. Now you've got all the printed material you absolutely need. Find yourself a little clipboard or some, some hard surface, grab a pen, and you're good to go. So that's number three. Print a copy and use that to get going. Um, and now you're ready to get signatures. Start with yourself. You've got one signature out of 12 already. That's like almost 10% of the signatures you need to fill that, that form. Now ask your wife or your husband, and you've got another 10%. See how easy it is? <laughs> That's the way you got to go. You start with your friends, your neighbors. First thing you know, you're, you're going to have filled out a sheet. And what you will have done, because you've approached people that you already know, people that are sympathetic, they know you're a fanatic for Fairville Canada already. You just need to tell them, you know, you just need to remind them, you know, I'm with Fairville Canada, right? And then go with your pitch, right? They'll sign, almost all of them sign. People that you know and that are your friends, they will sign just to do you a favor. One person signed just to get me off her back. <laughs> so those are the five steps. Peruve the pitch, read the script, print off the signature sheet, sign it yourself, and start at adding some easy win signatures to get comfortable with that pitch. If you do all of that, the least you will have achieved is that you will have collected 10 to 12 signatures already. Now's the time to go to the next phase. If you want to go to the next phase, you want to go do door to door, or you can continue doing this kind of thing. So I want to talk a little bit about my own petition collection exercise. So I got my whole soccer team to sign up. That's about 15 people. Just bring it over there. I, went, I had to go for two games that way <laughs> before I could get the, all the signatures. My uh, partner here where I live, she has a yoga class. I got everybody in her yoga class to sign up. She has clients who come in for massage and things like that. She's a, um, a healer kind of person. Uh, I, get, I get them all to sign one by one. And doing it that way, Oh, and then there's the dog park. That's another story altogether. I think I better cut that one short because I'll, I'll run. I'm running out of time here. Um, but doing it that way, I've managed to collect about 80 signatures 
without any heartbreak or hardship, I should say, at all. It's been fun the whole way. I'm having these fantastic conversations with people who are interested. They want to know what I'm doing. The theory of change of why the Citizens Assembly is important is so easy to sell. As soon as you tell people, listen, we need electoral reform in this country. You can argue about how important it is or not, but we need to talk about it. And we cannot trust our, our politicians to deliver on this issue because they're in a conflict of interest. So what they need to do is hand this over to some citizens so we can get a citizen's consensus. You tell them that, absolutely everybody is all over it. And this is what's really fun. And then you can go into the details, have conversations as they ask you questions, go back and forth. Um, and then you're really having a good time rather than something that could be intimidating. So that's the story. I've walked you through the pitch a little bit. Uh, I've talked about my own experience. Um, I think the thing to emphasize there is, is that do start with the people you know. That's the best and easiest and less, least intimidating way for you to practice your pitch. Once you've got that, you're going to be totally comfortable approaching uh, strangers and be able to get more signatures at that time. Thank you, Riel. And Ellen, uh, can you unmute yourself and tell us what you're doing in Carleton? You gotta unmute. There, there you go. I, I got it now. Okay, sorry. You're going to find out that I'm much happier going door to door than I am doing a presentation and especially on technology. But anyway, I want to thank you, Anita and Riel, for your introductions. And um, I want to tell everyone that it's really important to be comfortable ourselves, especially in the cold weather. We have to dress warmly. So I sort of look like granny at the door, as my son says. And I can get away with knocking on the door even at dusk and people will open the door. So I'm lucky that way because I also have lived in this community for a long time. And I really do think that my connections with the people in the community of Richmond um, know me because they've seen me walk here and I use all my resources as many as I can. Um, we want to be pre prepared emotionally as well. We want to be positive about knocking on somebody's door. We're offering Canadians at the door a chance to tell Parliament what they want. And we're, we're not sort of, um, I don't see it as putting our ideas on them, but rather than hearing what they would like to have in a more efficient and collaborative parliament, and also to have a say in our democracy. So when I, when I come to the door, I introduce myself, my name, and that I'm from Fair Vote Canada, and I have to stress the importance of having the person understand that I'm not representing one of the political parties. I am with a non-political group. Um, and sometimes they don't hear me. And I, especially when I started out, I was sort of sent away from the door with a real misunderstanding because I thought I was representing one or the other parties. I don't know. Um, I want to assess where the person is at. If they're... In this day and age, I collected petitions in 2016 too. And now we have people who are working from home. So we want to be respectful of where they're at. Are they on the phone? Are they focused at work? And uh, if they say yes, I'll say, I'll come back. I'll come on the weekend or on the, you know, at the end of the day. And usually they will say, what's it about? Because they don't want me at the door again. And so, being efficient with our connection to people and getting them to sign the petition. I have been reading the title of the top of the petition, Petition to the House of Commons for a Citizens' Assembly on Electoral Reform. And I say the most expedient way is for you to read this and then I can answer questions that you might have about it. So I try to engage them by having them read the petition. And then I can answer questions, but we have to be informative. And I do my best about what electoral reform is, what citizens assembly is, which was new from 2016. 
and what motion M86 is. And they're quite willing to ask me, you know, what, what, what these things are. I also um, include all people as much as I can. So if there's a wife or husband or a teenager in the house, I want them. And especially I, I, I focus on the 18 plus because we know if they get started um, being interested in politics, that they're going to keep uh, voting probably. So um, I have had kids, I was at the door with someone and there were six 18 year olds in walking down the street because I live near the high school and I wasn't having a very um, effective or a very um, successful time with the person at the door. And I'd already talked with them quite a while. So I just called to the kids the 18 year olds and they put their one the first one said they weren't going to sign and then somebody else said I'll sign we take we take um, in political science we take about proportional representation and so he signed and then all the others including the one who said he wasn't going to um, did so um, I want to be respectful of their decisions because there are some who will say I never sign anything until I've looked into it, or um, I, I have to think about it further, and I refer them to fairvotecanada.ca. <clears throat> I, um, I, I start with telling them that I'm your neighbor across the main river or the road the, near the high school, that sort of thing. I present myself as a friendly neighbor and that I work for Fair Vote Canada and have, and, and I answer um, questions. I've already said that. Um, I um, go to every door because every house, every vote counts. And I'll say that. I'm going to every door because every vote counts. Um, I have to check to make sure that they're Canadian citizens because there are people who in our community who aren't, and um, they, then they can't sign it, actually. I, um, when I'm talking to people, I talk about inclusiveness, uh, representation, participation, fairness, collaboration, civility, respect, getting things done efficiently in the House of Commons, any of those. When I'm seeing the people at the door, I'm, I'm just reminded of a woman who had, she came to the door with her baby, but her mother was there too. And so she sent her mom to the door and I talked to the mom and then she took it in to the, the daughter and she signed it as well because we know that there are less representation. There is less representation in the House of Commons than we'd like for, for women. Um, I think that's, I want to just say that uh, being rooted in the community gives me the advantage because of the connections I've built and uh, that most people like the idea of being recognized as a valuable citizens of, citizen of Canada of signing a petition to the House of Commons. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you very much, Ellen. And just to reinforce for everyone, uh, you know, that Ellen lives in a pretty solidly conservative riding. So if you're listening to her and thinking about going out in the community yourself and you're one of our volunteers in Edmonton, in Calgary, in a rural conservative riding, um, if she can do it in Pierre Polyev's riding, um, I mean, I just find that really inspirational, which is like a big reason I asked her to tell us what she's up to. All right, I'm going to turn this over now to Jillian O'Reilly, and uh, she's going to give us some practical training and tips that we're all here anxious to learn. Hi, everybody. I apologize. I am on my iPad. I have come unscathed the entire pandemic without a Zoom issue. But of course, tonight, I've had some Zoom issues on my laptop. So bear with me as I'm sure you have throughout um, our entire pandemic and as we move into more virtual organizing. So thanks for y'all and Ellen for providing the important anecdotal information we need about 
how great it is to talk to humans and engage them on the issues that we want to see happen. And it is the most important thing you can choose to do in any campaign. The field is where a campaign lives and where a campaign builds. So anybody taking that action, whether you get 12 signatures or 200 plus, like Ellen the machine over here, you know, it all makes a huge difference. I always say in organizing, if everybody does a little, we can make a lot of change. And so it's really, I see it's a great turnout tonight. Lovely to see everyone here. Now I'm going to go over, um, I know Riel asked me to go over a little bit more in detail, the elements of the script. And the reason I want to do that is that I want to remind everybody about, you know, when you're canvassing, it's important to be yourself and to not get lost in the minutia details of the script. But there are some things we don't want to lose. Um, the asks, our introduction, and to make sure we get the commitment. Really, the script is about a, it's a sandwich format. So I like to think of it as a nice burger. If I was in front of you, I'd draw a, I'd draw a big old burger. And the top portion on the script, I'm gonna actually ask Michelle if she can share a screen. Um, just so we can go over some of the meat and potatoes. And that way you can pay attention to those details when you review it, like Rael had talked about before. So unfortunately, I don't know. The, the script, right? Yes, the script. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. I can't do it on my darn iPad. <laughs> so Michelle is the hero of tonight. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I don't. Anita, could you give me the option to share my screen? You can also drop the link in the chat as well, and people can self open um, and look at it through a parallel by just popping open the link, and I can go over some of the meat and the potatoes. If you're having an issue, Michelle, I made you host. Did that help? To go from co-host to host? I don't know what's happening. Running I shared green. the link, though. Everyone should be able to access the link. I I'm seeing probably, more people on it. I can it. probably open it up, Jill, if you want to. If you can just sure. bear with me, I'll find it and open it. Sure. And the, Michelle's got the link in the chat. And I see more people are popping on the link, so that's fantastic. Great. And we'll, you'll have lots of extra time to review this, you know, at your leisure as well and as you prepare. So as people log on, I'm going to go over the basic introduction, the things that you can't lose um, when you do talk to the, all the humans at the doors. Um, you want to make sure you introduce yourself. You make sure you let them know you're a volunteer. And you know that we are basically collecting signatures for a non-controversial petition. So you let them know it's a very broad-based petition about reforming our electoral system. And you wanna make sure you insert your MP, that's really important, and that you explain that our petition is about a motion for the government to convene a citizens assembly. So those are really important elements you don't wanna forget. And you're further explaining the motion and you can probably choose, pick and choose some of the words that you might um, find are stronger or things that you want to insert, but we've given you a template here to work with. So, you know, you're explaining that it's a big deal. You know, we don't want important decisions to be left completely to politicians. And we want to hear citizens be able to be a part of that process and make these decisions. So this line works extremely well. I feel like that's Riel's piece. A citizen's assembly is one way to get a citizen's consensus on this issue. Um, that can be taken to politicians for consideration. Now this, you never wanna lose. You wanna have a nice, broad, open-ended question. I come from an organizing background and we always make sure there's an, a buy-in question and we ask people what they think. What do you think about handing this topic over to citizens' bodies to make recommendations? Then you're able to hear what people think. And if they're very supportive right away, you can cut right to the meat, go right to the meat of the hamburger. Of course, and you can, like Ellen said, 
you know, you, you tell them, here's the petition, you know, I need all the your contact information, like your name, postal code, email address, it sounds like we can count on your support. And you can fork that petition right over. Because if you have an A door, somebody who's very, very supportive, and they say it right away, and they interrupt you, you can go right to the meet. That way you can work on talking to those people who are what I call B doors and are on the fence. Um, but if they're not an A door, <laughs> you want to continue to make sure to explain what the petition is, you know, so they say they're maybe lukewarm, supportive, you know, you can go further into details. The motion we are talking about is being discussed in parliament um, and will be voted on this winter. It has been seconded by MPs from four different parties could you sign our petition? So maybe they needed that extra piece. And, you know, for instance, if they're supportive after that, you definitely want to go into the details, make sure you put your name, postal code, email address. And, you know, we also want them to join Fair Vote Canada's campaign so you can answer yes or no. And once you hand over that clipboard, I have a couple of golden rules. You never talk when somebody has paper in front of them and you've asked them to make a commitment. It is the golden rule of canvassing, organizing, everything when you ask people to put pen to paper because you've just asked them to do something and it's an important something. And if you interrupt them, it undermines what you've asked them to do. So it is critical that you make sure you don't talk. Look at your shoes, look up at the ceiling and let them finish signing the petition. And then make sure you check it over too. If something's unclear, please point it out to them. We don't want to have petitions where we can't read people's signatures or we can't read people's email addresses. So it's your job to go over it and you can say to them, hey, I can't read your name. We want to make sure your signature counts. Can I just, you know, can you rewrite it a little bit more clearly? And then, of course, you can provide them a flyer. Um, so what I'll do right now is I'm going to go over... We're going to take some time after I go over this in breakout groups to practice, um, you know, the script if you want once. But what's also really important is what I call the they say, we say, which can also be considered like comebacks. We want to make sure we can handle some of the questions that come up and that we're prepared to talk to folks. So what is a citizen's assembly? So this question might come up because it's unique. Um, we, I don't think there's been a discussion before Fair Vote Canada about citizens' assemblies. So you can explain that it's like a jury, a body of, a body of citizens that are our peers that can basically be selected to represent, you know, that region, gender, age, ethnicity, and, you know, include people from all political leadings. What do you think? So after each rebuttal that I usually give somebody at the door, I always reflect a question saying, what do you think? If you don't do that, you won't give that person an opportunity to say, hey, that sounds good, or I need more information, then you can definitely, you know, go, go on that information. If they say it sounds good after you've given them that, you know, secondary piece, it's important then you move right into the ask about signing um, the petition. So we've got some more um, pieces down here too. What will the Citizens Assembly do? So basically, the Citizens Assembly's responsibilities will be to forward its recommendations about electoral reform. So electoral reform, <clears throat> is, re is reform needed? And if so, sh should it replace our current system? So these are the big questions. And a Citizens Assembly would consist of about 250 people from across the country chosen to represent the general population. They would be given all the time they need to study the issues, and so, and so the explanation continues. You know, the exact mandate will be defined by, by a parliamentary committee. That's really important to say too, because obviously, you know, once it's in the hands of the government, there's probably gonna be some decisions that are, that are made that are not necessarily, um, that we don't know right away, but you can definitely make sure to reflect that back. So what sort of change are you promoting? It's democracy. We want the Citizens Assembly to be open-ended and it will address the status quo, status quo. So the use of ranked ballots, different ways of achieving proportional representation. And of course, talking about Fair Vote Canada, what, what you represent with Fair Vote Canada and proportional representation. But really the Citizens Assembly is to get consensus about what citizens would like to see. So we're really emphasizing this piece about democracy. It's not a right or left issue, 
it's just better access to democracy that we really want to make sure these assemblies are looking at. So if we keep going down, there's a couple of other rebuttals that we've included here. Um, how would proportional representation be different from how we vote now? Now, this is a good one because if people have heard of Fair Vote Canada and they don't quite understand what PR means versus first past the post. So we have someone's going down there and looking at that rebuttal, which is good. Um, so it's the principle that says the percentage of seats you know, a party has in the legislature should reflect the percentage of people who voted for that party. So I'd say everybody on this call knows how to explain that proportional representation piece because you're all part of Fair Vote Canada. So you need to explain that difference. And of course, the way to ensure proportionality is to elect our MPs in multi-member districts. So you're going into more details about PR. Um, and then for example here, um, you could put a, a local example like Rail have added, has added down here in the national capital region. This might be a good time to offer them a copy of our trifold, which explains this. So there's a, a flyer that Riel has that you can open up and does have this broken out. So I like first past the post. This comes up, you know, for people who may not be super politically engaged, but think, you know, the political system is good as is. So the Citizens Assembly may share that and that, you know, and it should be retained with minor tweaks. That could be possible. And we want to make sure people understand that the Citizens Assembly is open ended and it's looking at all forms of electoral reform. Um, you know, people have different views about first past the post. And I feel like everybody in this call would be able to, like, talk about that clearly. But and since you're representing Fairville Canada, you want to make sure you include that this is not an issue that should be left to the politicians. We really want the citizens assembly to make sure that they're looking at all potential options. So the real important piece is reflecting the question back to the person at the door saying, well, what do you think about pursuing the citizens perspective? And that's a really good way to rephrase this question because even if they're not totally sold on proportional representation, what you're really asking them is to take a chance on fighting for these citizens assembly so that people across the country can have an opportunity to inform the government about what they want. And that's what we're really promoting is that democratic opportunity. So to whom are the CA's recommend recommendations made? What would, um, you know, what would our politicians uh, be more likely to act on electoral reform based on the citizens assemblies? So again, the CA's recommendations will be public and directed at the government. So again, it's the citizens' assemblies that are informing the government that we want to make sure is incorporated in our response. So the CA, um, what the CA does is to provide that census-based view, what the citizens want. So if you keep going down, there's some more pieces in this too that are important that you should make sure you emphasize. So how well this is likely to work in practice depends on the political circumstances of the moment, but a CA would provide a lasting basis for discussions. So we're hoping that those structures, you know, will stay in place so that people can continue to inform the government about electoral reform. So these two are really important at the bottom because some people, you know, definitely say, I'm really busy right now. That's super common. Um, I've knocked on probably half a million doors in my life, and I can't tell you how many times people say that. And then with those folks, they may not have a lot of time, but it doesn't mean they're not interested in the issues. So usually I get right to the point. We're asking you to support a process to give citizens a voice in electoral form. Can you help us by signing our petition? You know, you can put the petition in front of them. They can read the top. Some people will just sign right away, and some people might say, I need more information, and you provide that flyer. Um, I don't vote. This is also common. I find, um, you know, more and more these days from doing a lot of uh, political campaigns. So, yes, lots of people don't think it's worth your time. I agree with people. I meet with them. You know, I meet them where they're at. Because if you say, like, if you lecture them and tell them, oh, it's terrible, you don't vote. That's you're just turning off the person at the door. So, you know, you say, hey, like, I, I understand why people don't think it's worth their time. But this is an opportunity to push the politicians to change that. And that, you know, voters, citizens are represented by people and have, people have more of a reason to vote because they're able to be informed by the government process and they're able to make a difference in what government decisions are being made. So we need everyone's help to build that momentum to make it happen.
can we count on you, you know, to sign our petition and you can totally hand it over at that point. So I'm speeding up just a little because um, I had to reduce some of my um, facilitation to make sure we have time for everything this evening. Um, and so that's an overview of the script and some of the rebuttals. So now what I'm gonna do is I will go over some tips for canvassing after we've done our breakout groups. So I had loaded breakout groups earlier today and they don't seem to have worked. So Michelle is our savior again and has created some breakout groups. So I'm gonna explain how the breakout groups should work. So Michelle has assigned you to a breakout group. You will need to nominate a leader quickly within the first 10 seconds that you all land in your breakout group tonight. And that person will also be the reporter. So they will report back any questions or comments you had about your breakout group when we come back together. That the person who is the lead in your group will also be in charge of making sure at least everybody has some sort of practice in your group, whether it's saying the script or practicing the they say, we say. So you get a chance to practice those hard moments because that's what's really important is we role play those hard moments so we know what kinds of things to expect on the door. And then at least, at least if you've done one to two of those things and every participant has had a chance, then you'll be able to come back into the main group. So I was hoping we'd have about 15 minutes to practice in our breakout groups. So coming back at about 7.15, maybe 7.17, and then we can have some time to debrief and discuss as a group. There's a lot of people on the call today, I recognize. And that's why we want to give everyone a few minutes to digest what we've just gone over and to talk about it in your groups and some tips and tricks that you think you might need to share as well if you all had a chance to practice. So even if you can't do door to door, this is still a good time to learn what it's all about and to hear what others have to say. Because I do see some comments popping up in the chat. And the other thing I want to mention too, and something that I changed when I ran a political campaign is I made sure people had fun canvassing and we did it in groups and teams and we had opportunities where we could you know go together rather than suffering alone it's always better to be with people to build those skills and to make you know something of it so that you can meet together practice together go out have that coffee afterwards um, even if you're having some microphone trouble in your group it's still worth um, popping in to hear some of the comments and to hear the practicing so that you're aware of what, <clears throat> you know, what you what could potentially be done uh, when you take these uh, skills and pieces home. So, uh, Michelle, we've got the groups that have popped up. I can't see it in mine because of my pad. Okay. Yeah, so the group should be popping up in your um, portal and you can join right now. Okay. Uh, I, oh. Hello? So I'm, I just want to say, I got a lot of questions about like specific writings. I do have, Anita has created a huge list of all the writings and identified which ones are targets, which ones we know are supportive, um, which ones we know are not supportive, um, ones that we are unsure of, and it might be good to target them if we have enough volunteers. So if you have a question about your specific writing, you can either put it in the chat or you can send an email to Anita um, and we'll let you know if, if she hasn't already emailed you. Uh, presumably, if you've signed up to collect signatures, you would have received an email already. But if you haven't, can let me know. Can I just clarify that? So I'm about 75 emails behind. So I haven't, so if you, if you signed up and you tick the box that says, I don't want to be in, put in touch with anybody else. I want to just be all by on my own. I haven't emailed you yet because I just haven't got to those folks yet. I'm, I had to start with the people who are willing to kind of work in a group, but then I will get to you. And if you just signed up recently in the last two days, you may not have heard from me yet, but feel free to shoot me an email and, and get you going. Oh, 
Okay, that's a very good point. Um, Anita and Michelle, thank you. Um, now what I'd like to do is we probably won't get to every group tonight because we did say we'd try to close off around 730. And I know probably everybody has lots to do. Um, we'll take a couple of pieces of feedback from each group or questions that might be how do I handle this like from our group um, with Elisa and Steven one of their big concerns is like oh I'm really worried about people not having enough time um, and so we talked about like strategies around that meeting people where they're at um, you know I really want to watch my show you're interrupting my show sometimes I'm like I'm the same way I don't want anyone interrupting my show I'll be super quick and you give them the real Coles notes version hand over that petition if you can if it doesn't work out you know you do give them the flyer and you move on to the thousands of other people that you could have the opportunity to or like ellen said like you know it sounds like ellen is a super dedicated volunteer and she asked can i come back when your show's done you know maybe you can wedge that in because they're not saying i'm not interested they're just saying not at the specific moment so maybe we'll go in a bit of a round here and i'll pull a couple of hands i see christine um, has their hand up. Go ahead, Christine. Yeah, sorry. I just shared information in our breakout that I, I just want to make sure is accurate in case it wasn't. Um, but my understanding is that in terms of conservative votes in the last election, more people actually voted for conservative candidates than other parties. And yet, because of the way first past the post works, we ended up in a minority government. Is that true? That was my understanding coming out of the last election because it's a big selling point for conservatives. I'm going to defer to Riel or Anita on this one because they are content experts or Michelle. Riel, do you want to take that one? If you're still sure. here, would you mind? Yeah, no, I, I have no problem taking that. Uh, yes, it is true. The, the liberals got fewer votes than the conservatives in the last election, uh, but they got <laughs> way, way more seats. Now, uh, a side note on that, though, is that both the Liberals and the Conservatives won more seats than they had votes. Okay. So they both benefited from first past the post. So we just need to be aware of that. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Good question. It's always to be, and if you're unsure of facts, please reach out to leaders here like Riel, <laughs> Ellen, Michelle, Anita, um, somebody else that you might know in your chapter. Um, we'll pull from another um, group. I'm just looking for some hands here. If you had a question or a way that you wanted to handle situations, I see some physical hands up. I saw Wayne Taylor. Go ahead, Wayne. Wayne, we're waiting for you. Wayne, you're muted. <laughs> Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead, Wayne. Okay. Uh, we spoke about a few things, but um, one of the things that I personally would like to see built into the script, just in terms of speaking to everyone, and I don't think uh, many people would, would uh, not be aware of this, uh, and I'm thinking about what's going on in the world in general, uh, down in the States, and we're seeing what's going on between uh, Ukraine and Russia and just the world as itself. The democracy is on the line. The democracy is, uh, you know, it, it, it's critical at the moment. And they're going to be talking about that right through 2024 in the States. We're doing this in the next couple of months. And I think a lot of people would uh, agree with the fact that, yes, democracy needs to be protected. And that's really at the heart of what we're doing on the doorstep here. We want to protect our democracy and uh, we, we, we want to ensure that we've got the strongest system available for us. And why should we have a citizens assembly to examine that during a time when democracy is on the line worldwide? Thank you, Wayne. That's a very um, important point. Um, and I also think important to you know recognize the current situation and meet people where they're at. Um, so thank you. I'm going to go to Tim. I'm going in the order of the hands now. Um, go ahead, Tim, and then we'll get Debbie and Bruce and Amanda. And I think, unfortunately, that'll be all the time for hands, but we'll be able to do some yeah. follow-up. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, representing Group 17. Um, great to talk to the Sioux in Toronto, uh, way out here in rural Alberta. Um, 
basically, we, we discussed the script and we, we, we thought it was very helpful and, and uh, was a good, uh, sorry, I got a dog at the door here. Sorry. Um, uh, one of the, some of the questions that came up, we were wondering, for example, the, the, the trifold handouts. Now, do we print those out ourselves or do we get a supply from you guys? That's, that was the one, one question. And also, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, do we have, does, does Fairfield Canada have the, the data sets from every riding showing what the outcomes would have been in the ridings if there was a PR system in place? I know that we see it uh, sort of uh, um, countrywide, I've seen that on the, on the website here and there, but do you have it down, broken down by the by riding? And is something we could get or to, to include in our information? Uh, just sort of curious about that. Um, I'll just wait, wait for the answers and yeah, just thank you. You want me to answer that, Jill? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So if you're in the Ottawa area region, uh, Riel and his team have their own uh, little trifold brochure that they like to use. Everyone else uh, can have the generic flyer all about this motion and about a citizens assembly that you can hand out if you're doing canvassing, streeting, or you're going to be out talking to people, just email me and I will send you however many you can use. Um, so they are definitely available. In terms of PR simulations, we there are after every election we do national level simulations, uh, but breaking it down by riding is really hard because obviously riding boundaries would change with proportional representation, and that's really not where we want to go with the door anyway. But if you have people that are PR supporters and you're wanting to get them to sign, we always have the little postcards how we voted, what we got, that sort of shows the discrepancy, and you could think of that as something else that you could. Uh, carry along with you if you like them. But again, we're trying to sell a process, not a particular system. Okay, good questions. Um, we're going to go to uh, Debbie next. Go ahead, Debbie. Thank you. Um, so in our group, we um, all agreed that we like the script and we're comfortable with it, whether or not we're going door to door or we're streeting. Um, because re in reality, whether you're going door to door or you're standing and have people are coming to you, or you're approaching people, you can still use the script. But one of the questions that came up with our group uh, that we wanted to clarify. Uh, so, for example, in my writing in Coquitlam, we're, of course, going to collect the signatures. We have a, an MP that we need to convince. Do all the signatures have to be from people in his writing? Someone thought that they didn't matter. Um, and we just want to clarify that. In this petition, if you're trying to convince one MP, all the signatures have to be from people in that person's writing. Go ahead, Anita. Okay. Uh, they don't have to be to be valid. So, you know, when you're going to see uh, Ron McKinnon again and want to give him a pile of petitions showing him that constituents want him to vote for this, it doesn't matter if there's a few people that you got outside the shopping center who happen to be in the riding next door. Okay. But you don't, you don't want a ton of them because right. the MPs will look at the postal codes and if they see that there's a whole whack of people on there that actually can't vote for them, it decreases the effectiveness of what you're trying to do. So try to get most of them from the riding button. It doesn't need to be all of them. Okay, great. Thank you. That answers the question. That was it for us. Okay, thank you, Debbie. And we'll go to um, Bruce and then Amanda. Um, and I think, and then we, I, we'll take one more question from Kathleen, okay? And then we're going to cap the questions and go over some hot tips. Go ahead, Bruce. Um, yeah, I'm, <clears throat> um, I'm, um, I'm one of the type of person that... Um, uh, collecting or canvassing is volume, massive volume. And um, if you want, if what Anita is looking for is, okay, we're going to group them in the writing and get the politician, you know, the beauty contestant, um, to, you know, um, uh, to get an idea of like, oh, these people are going to be my voters or not or whatever. Um, that's great. But I don't understand why the system or Fair Vote Canada doesn't have a program on people's phone where you immediately can see uh, through a QR code or whatever that, oh yeah, this person uh, lives in the writing and this, you know, and um, so the uh, 
the politician in that writing um, already automatically, um, you know, has the, uh, you know, the person um, who's concerned about uh, proportional representation. And yeah, I'm, do you want me to, I, I'm going to um, unpack that because what I think Bruce is saying is that like, you know, somebody at the door might think, you know, maybe we don't have the fancy tools that you might see by like a political party. That's what I think you're saying, Bruce, and having that voter information that you might have. Like, um, I think the one thing is important to remind people is we're a grassroots organization, Fair Vote Canada. I'm a citizen just like you. And we're building our list by going door to door, you know, and like our job is to build that list and provide it to the politicians. And we're doing it in the most old school way that we can do so that we can have these real conversations with you. Um, some organizations have those tools out there. Um, lots of American organizations do because um, voter lists in America are public. So in Canada, that's not the case. You have to be a registered political party and a representative of that party to get access to the voters lists. So it's important to like, you know, point out that information that citizens organizations, you know, in this country, you know, have to build their own lists. They have to build those lists of supporters for whatever action they're doing, um, you know, build those lists of people who want to be involved and want to take leadership on that issue. Um, so I will go to Amanda next, go ahead and then Kathleen. Hi, thank you. Um, representing group, oh, sorry, I just shut off my phone. Um, representing group three, um, I had a question comment that was answered in my group already, but I thought I would bring it up. Um, so for my writing personally, uh, I'm in a very conservative writing in McKinsey's Calgary. Um, and my concern was that uh, a lot of the constituents are of an Asian ethnicity or an Asian background. And uh, myself, I don't have uh, the language skills uh, to be to feel comfortable conversing about any of this uh, in what could be other people's first language or only language, um, specifically talking about like, okay, dialects of Chinese. Um, I don't have the language skills to be able to do that if I were wanting to canvas. Um, and then it was it was uh, proposed that, you know, like a solution to that is just focus on what I can do and focus on like, you know, the friends and family that I can converse with in English. Um, and uh, and then, you know, if any of them are interested um, and are able to converse with their friends and family in Chinese, for example, that's where I can uh, empower other people with my friends to be able to do that with their communities as well. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, Amanda. And I always say in organizing language is not a barrier to talking to people. We can figure out ways to connect um, with folks in our communities and it could be through their friends or family. Like I can't tell you how many times I've gotten somebody at the door to call their daughter you know, to like get that message across. Or I found somebody who's a super volunteer. Like if I'm door knocking a building and it's predominantly one language and I get a really great supporter who might be bilingual, I ask them to do a grassroots translation, um, you know, so that at least you could give that piece, like a written piece over to the person you're speaking with so they understand what it's about to be able to ask them. Um, so it is always a little bit of extra time, but if somebody's you know willing to listen about improving our democracy, it's important that we spend that time with them. And maybe you need to make a note, get their number, have another volunteer call them back at a specific time. So there's definitely ways that we can mitigate that. But it's important if someone's interested, we want to make sure we reach that person and do whatever we can. Um, also, too, I've definitely used um, live Google Translate on my phone. Um, and I organized a riding once, completely spoke Portuguese, won every poll. I do not speak a word of Portuguese, let me tell you. Um, so it was all grassroots intervention, uh, me with like, you know, nice cue cards, um, handing them out to people, good language, um, you know, bolstered flyers, etc. cetera. Um, so I will go to Kathleen next. And that's our last question. Then we're gonna go over some tips. Go ahead, Kathleen. Okay, thank you very much. I, I was in a, I'm in Toronto, by the way, in a liberal writing, and I did uh, lobby 
our liberal member uh, a year or so ago, and she said she supported this. But in our group, we had Ellen French, who is uh, uh, apparently a super good uh, uh, petition getter. And she said the script is good, but she said it's very important that you emphasize this is a nonpartisan group, and that is not in the script that I could see. So I had wrote it in and highlighted it. And then I put myself, we weren't really good role players, so we didn't use the script, but I put myself at the door. And the question I had was, who is going to be on the citizens assembly and who's going to select the person? So, and I'd like to be able to answer that question because I would ask that. And I think it's uh, not a, uh, not a strange question to have. So uh, uh, where do we get that information? Is it on Fairville Canada's website? Go ahead, Anita or Riel, just for the specifics. So I'm pretty sure that the, flyer I have for everybody that's canvassing or streeting that starts on the front page I'm pretty sure my memory's like with a little uh description of what a citizens assembly is which includes saying that it's you know selected by ra randomly like a jury to represent people all across the country and that kind of thing so I'm pretty sure it's on the flyer and also on the flyer is a QR code goes to the main campaign website for this campaign nationalcitizensassembly.ca which starts off with what is a citizens assembly and then also has a whole page on what is a citizens assembly if people really want to uh, dig in. I think people just really just want to be reassured that it's not going to be people that are handpicked by the politicians. That's what they're really concerned about. It's not that they want to get all into the logistics of it. It's just that they want to know that it's like a jury and that it's independent of politicians and nonpartisan. Thank you. And it's, I, I don't know if I'd be that comforted to know it was like a jury. <laughs> I'd like to be experts on, on, on it as well. But uh, yeah. okay. thank you. And, and then I said, if I was at the door, I'd say, uh, well, I know of a few systems that did so well, like Israel. And obviously, I'm going to have to deal with that. I'm hoping I can find information about the different possible ways and explain no it won't be like israel <laughs> so I, again I, i'll look on the website and see where i'll find that it must be somewhere and if i can't find it i'll ask i think i wouldn't spend too much time worrying about having to explain that it's not like israel i would just back up to the process and you know find some common ground with the person and say you know i really you know, if this is honest for you, I, I really wouldn't want a system like that either. You know, I totally understand your concern. And that's why we want an evidence based process. And that's why we want Canadian citizens to come together and find something that's going to make our democracy better and look at all, all the evidence for everything so that we'll be assured that the things that are important to Canadians are what is going to be recommended. Yes, because nobody's, in, in nobody's going to want that, you know, I think in the script, it only references one particular type of uh, proportional representation. And I know there are a few different ones being posited. Oh, and I'm not familiar with them, but I, I, I need at least, I would ask that question at the door. So I, I need to get at least that much information, but I know where to get it. But I think we should all be ready to answer questions like that. I'm not, I'm like a juror, really. <laughs> That's the kind of question I, I want to know. So thank you. Thanks, Kathleen. And that's a good segue into just some tips and reminders on the doors um, that don't necessarily have to do with um, the script in front of you and some of the they say we say or you know I call comebacks it's important to recognize there are three kinds of doors and only three there are a doors people who are like yes sign me up you barely have to say anything they invite you in you know they give you a cup of tea they're like easy peasy there's B doors, and those are the people who are willing to have the conversation, ask those questions, and really like want to know more. And they're not saying no, they're just saying, I need to know more. And then there's C doors, people who are just like, nope, I don't have any time, I don't care, you know, and like, you know, basically give you the cold shoulder. The C doors you don't want to spend any time with because it's a waste of your time. The most time you want to spend with are the B doors. So we can bring them on side and really remind them about the motion that's in front of them. 
The one thing I will say about B doors that you have to be cautious of is I won't call them. There's some B doors that are real. They like to be chatty. They're chatty, chatty, chatty. And if you have time to chat, chat, chat with them, great. But me, like everybody else, probably has some lives to lead, even though you want to participate in this awesome campaign. So with the B-Doors and the Chatty Cathy's, you want to make sure that if you're going through a few questions with them and it's getting really deep, um, you want to bring them back to the core ask and why you're there. You know, we want to get the ball rolling. We want the citizens' assemblies so that we can get this dialogue started on what electoral reform can look like. Because sometimes people want to get into the minutia, like how many people, where will they be from? You know, and they want like all those nitty gritty details and you need to kind of pull them back to get that ask in. Otherwise, you're going to be standing there for 45 minutes and you're like, oh, dear Lord, like I have to go, you know, make a supper for my kids, all that kind of stuff. So it's important that we spend the time with the B-doors, but we also... Um, spend our time wisely and like you can interrupt people politely um you know to get them you know back on the piece that you need uh to be on and people appreciate your leadership too and sometimes i have to say to people hey i'm so sorry i have to talk to you about 40 more people on your block today and the reason i'm here is i just really want to make sure that you have this information and you're able to take a look at our petition and honestly, if you're honest with people, they're like, okay, I totally get it. I just was really interested in the issue. So you can bring them back around. Um, so there are some things. I know one thing that needed wanted me to talk about too today was how you can, you know, have those dinner conversations, you know, over the holidays and maximize your time with friends, family, loved ones, other people, you know, parties where you're going. Just some cool tips that I do bring a petition with you. If you have your bag and you're going to that family party, bring the petition with you. Who cares? You know, you can fold them up, stuff them in. You got your pen. All good. Um, and Ellen already said this. If you have one person on side in a house, you know, maybe you're doing um, some of your visit your neighbors, you know, over the holidays, giving them those holiday cards. One person says yes. The likelihood of other people saying yes in the household is very, very real. So it's important that you maximize, hey, is anyone else living in the house who's over the age of like, you know, 18 or whatever it is, and you can get them to sign. Some other basic things that I just want to remind people of, and this is a golden ticket. Um, if you ask someone to sign the petition and they have like questions or they're signing it, I always stand side by side with people. So I'm not looking over people when they're signing the petition. I'm often side by side with them. So I can answer any questions that they might have. It sounds wild and like stupid that it's such a small thing, but it really does help at the end of the day to make sure people feel comfortable and you're not like, you know, staring at them when they're signing that board. Um, the other important pieces too, is that you want to set goals for yourself, I think that are reasonable. So if I'm doing, you know, it's unreasonable for me to think I've one kid, I'm pregnant, you know, so I'm not going to be able to knock on, you know, 200 doors tomorrow. It's just not possible. But if I set a goal for myself is I'm going to get like four signatures a day or 10 signatures a day and you make that reasonable, you're able to attain those goals and help Fair Vote Canada, you know, reach that overall goal. Um, and I'm not sure, um, you know, if we're going to be, if Anita will be working with you to revise some of those goals, or maybe there's like a competition that might be happening to get the most signatures. I always like a good competition. But um, think about those cool things you could do to motivate your peers um, to, to meet those goals. Um, the last thing that I want to say that's really important that I've already said it is it's important to be yourself. So it's important um, if you're reading from the script and you're nervous and some, and you feel that you're nervous, you can tell people. You can be like, hey, it's my first door. I'm so sorry. Thanks for being patient with me. I'm passionate about this, but I want to make sure I give you the details. It's okay to be real and it's okay to be yourself. And people really respond to that. Um, and they will have more of the time of day for you if you're able to like reframe it. And you're not going to you're not going to do a perfect job on the first 10 doors. It's always going to be a mess. You might forget a bunch of stuff. Try to bring your friend or buddy, even if they don't want a door knock, they could be the flyer hander. They can help you to have that moral support, you know, 
on the doors. Yes. And someone put in the chat, just popped up, be authentic for sure. Like you want to be yourself, be authentic and do the best job you can. And don't beat yourself up. You're doing something that's really important. It's democratic. It's giving people access to democracy. And if this, something like this passes, you know, can make a huge difference for the way that we actually build politics in our country. You know, bringing back the democratic process is like, you know, it's something that we are losing every day. You know, when I worked for an organization, I saw in low income ne- neighborhoods, they were cutting polling stations. They were cutting hours on polling stations, you know? And so stuff like this is so important because people deserve to have a say in how they think the government should make these decisions about ways that shape our country. So I'll leave it at that because we're over about 15 minutes of time. And I'm sure Anita, yeah. (laughs) I have have one more question for you, Jillian, because we spent a lot of the time talking about door to door and it is the thing that people, it's really great that people are the most afraid of. Do you have any comments that are specific to streeting? Because I already have about seven or eight groups that are ready to go, but they're able to do something like in front of the library, in front of a community center at a busy, on a busy street, they're ready to do that. Do you have any specific, and it's a little less intimidating. Yeah. Streeting is great. I love streeting. I love streeting in front of the grocery store on Saturday mornings at high volume. People have their food. The liquor stores on Friday are like sweet. People are like so friendly and like happy it's Friday. Um, Also, you can make it themed, right? Like it's the holidays. You could all wear a little like, you know, Santa hats, like make it fun, be in pairs. Um, You want to have that good hook line. You know, when people are like passing you, you're like, hey, I know you just got your groceries. Want to talk to you about this important thing to fight to build our democracy, you know, we're fighting for citizens assemblies at Fair Vote Canada so we can make sure the government, you know, is informed about what people want for electoral reform. What do you think? And, you know, you try to intervene with people as they're walking by. It's a bit of a challenge with streeting because people are on their way out or into things. So they're trying to get to point A to point B. But I find if you pick times where people are more relaxed for streeting, it actually benefits you a bit better. So you don't want to pick like high stress times, but like, you know, like those Friday evenings or like the Saturday mornings, you know, when you get people on their off hours. So streeting is awesome and you can get a ton of high volume on streeting too. Um, You know, especially if you are in a neighborhood that, you know, everybody works in the daytime that might be not, you know, not answering their doors, but pick those high volume times and high density places and streeting is great. Bring a lot of flyers though. I do have to say that about streeting is that If you can't get people on the first ask, like can't stop them, you might have to give them a flyer for that follow-up too. That's great. Thank you, Jillian. Mm -hmm. All right. I wanted to thank everybody for spending their evening with us, learning how to do this, building some confidence. And I hope uh, hope you all came away with some tips a little more. Maybe I'm ready to get out and do this, go back. If I emailed you and your group and nobody's responded and jumped in and said, let's get going, you can be the one to jump in and say, let's set a time, let's set a place, let's go. Um, So I wanted to thank everybody and I wanted to thank Jill and also, of course, Riel and Ellen for contributing and everyone that participated in the groups and had questions. And you can feel free to follow up with me on email with any questions that you had. And if I don't know the answer, uh, because I'm learning too, I will be asking Jillian, uh, who will let me know. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good night. Good luck out Bye. there. Keep in touch. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Good job. Good night. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Cut off for now. <laughs>